Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Hill Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here for the fourth installment of our Tape Talk series. Going to focus this one on the offensive line. But before I do that, got to do a little shameless plug real quick, guys. So bear with me for a second. For just eight thirty three dollars a month, head on over to TarHillIllustrated.com. You can sign up for just eight thirty three dollars a month. Get all of our premium content. We go where the Tar Heels go. AJ's everywhere. I'm in as many places as I can go. And it's especially been a little bit weird year because of COVID, which has kind of messed that up a little bit. But if the team's there, football or basketball, AJ's there. We've also got a great staff and David Sis, basketball recruiting, Miss Dina King is, is people like to call her, who's just you know a superstar in the state of North Carolina when it comes to football recruiting. So make sure you head on over to TarHillIllustrated.com after this video is done and sign up for just eight thirty three a month. AJ, th- there's the plug. I'm done with that one. Let's dive into the offensive line. Um, another a group that's starting to build depth, starting to build a lot of depth, you know, returning all the starters on last year's team, Brian Anderson, Marcus McKeithen, Jordan Tucker, Joshua Zudu, who is out for the spring through injury right now. So Ed Montillas is kind of slotting for him, at least what we saw in practice on that starting offensive line. And Montillas is a guy that's played a ton as well and awesome Richard. So just the fact that when you're returning as many guys as Carolina is returning, literally all of them. And a lot of them guys are experienced upperclassmen as well. I mean, that just bodes so well for, for this offensive line and just having that continuity, especially when you got a guy like Sam Howell behind you, who, you know, like we've talked about before, is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate coming into the season. So let's talk about the starters real quick, kind of what we saw from them on Saturday, and then we can dive a little bit more into the depth. But I think Carolina's sitting really pretty with, with those guys in particular. Well, they have one of the better returning starting offensive lines in America. And we've seen a lot of growth there. Austin Richards is someone – that has to become more consistent. Mm-hmm. But he played a ton of snaps last year. They gave him every opportunity to learn and grow. And he was with some experienced guys so that kind of helped pull him along. And we see Brian Anderson grow from yeah, a guy. a big that, leader in that room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from a guy that came to Carolina. And, you know, a lot of people weren't sure if he would ever see the field. And uh, he worked, his guys worked his butt off. Took um, advantage got, of his opportunity, yeah, with police. Well, he's got an yeah. amazing attitude. He's mm-hmm. worked so hard, got an amazing attitude loves what he's doing, loves this sport, loves the role that he has. And he got an opportunity when Nick Polino went down and he, he played pretty well. I think he exceeded a lot of people's expectations. And um, and where he is now is he's a pretty good player. He says that he's continuing to, to improve his communication, calling stuff at the line of scrimmage. And so that's a big part of what will help them be better at pass protection because you've got to identify and communicate. Uh, in pre-snap, so that's that's what he's really working on. I think he'll be better at that. He's a smart kid. Yeah, uh, he's dedicated. So I think they he'll, they will be better in pass protection because Brian Anderson will do a better job in that. And of course, other things will trickle down. But you got to love McKeith and Tucker. I think they're both going to play in the NFL. Huge uh, guys too, you know, especially huge, McKeith. And, yeah, McKeith is a road grader. Easy, I mean, easy, it's, it's the easy, baller. Easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're really strong on that side. Uh, Azuna's a guy that can play in the NFL as well. Uh, Montillas is the start. You know, he started a bunch. Montillas has started 10 or 11, 12 games, something like that. Okay. So they're in real good shape with their first six, with Montillas being the six. And then you got Kieran Johnson, who played a lot. Another guy came in as a walk on. He's now yeah. on scholarship. Played he's well exceeded, last season at times. He's mm-hmm. exceeded everybody's expectations. So there's seven deep there. The mission last year was very clear got to get to eight. Every, all, every coach I've ever covered, every program, Coaches always say, we've got to get the eight offensive line. We've got to be able to rotate, get a, be able to withstand some injuries because attrition usually hits the offensive line. Uh, almost more, It's almost more of a guarantee than any other position group. You're going to have attrition up there. So you got to have guys that you can slot in there. Well, they, they didn't hit eight last year. They got to seven. Now, if they get to eight, they have all these same guys back, right? If they get to eight, you got to throw in Jonathan Adorno as a candidate to become one of those eight, a strong candidate. Wyatt Tunall, who came on last year, they said he was improving throughout the course of the year. He's someone who's a candidate to be in the eight, maybe extend it to nine. Uh, and then you also have w- uh, William Barnes, who was the absolute prize of the recruiting class of 2018, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. An interesting thing about William Barnes is in the opener of his true freshman year, they played at Cal. He played 41 snaps. Mm-hmm. And the next week he played 48 snaps. He's only played 116 or so snaps in the offensive line since. 
He had a little bit of an injury that year. And then there were some weight issues. Mac was really praised him following the fourth practice. A, that he's doing well. B, he's really talking out there. Something you noticed at the practice. Yeah, I'll tell a story about that in a second. But And his weight's down. And he's kept it down. Yeah, I think There's it's a 342 to 320, I think is what Mac said. Yeah, in that range. And that, you know, look, coaches sometimes don't have to watch a guy do stuff to know if they're committed. Yeah. They see him get on the scale. Mm-hmm. And if you don't meet the standard on the scale, then that means you're not as committed. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that that's an issue anymore with him. And he's a very talented guy, and he's actually playing right tackle. He was a guard in those in that when he first got to Carolina. They recruited him as a guard. Uh, now he's playing right tackle. He was very vocal. He looked pretty good. So there's a ninth. You, know, you can get out to 10. They have options. They have the potential to go certainly past eight. Mac even mentioned 10 the other day which I thought was uh, impressive. They have those yeah. numbers there. And then if you start talking about some of the other guys who in time will probably help out a Caden Baker, whom I like, dad played for Bobby Bowden at Florida State. You love Diego Pounds. He's huge, so I'll man. Let, I'll let you talk to some Diego Pounds. Just an enormous human being. I'd love to know how much money his parents spent feeding that Oh, kid. my God. He's the biggest uh, – it, 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 let's just put it this way. He didn't look like a true freshman. He looked like a junior. Yeah. I mean, no, and, and he looked good in some drills. He did, yeah. Mm-hmm. He went up against some older guys and was holding his own in some drills. You've got a lot of real good clips mm-hmm. of the offensive line and a lot of technique stuff and balance and using your strength. And that's usually where the young kids struggle because they don't have to do that in high school. Definitely. You know, when you watch this, and this is diversion here, Zach Rice footage. He's mm-hmm. the high school senior from up in Lynchburg. He's already got a lot of that stuff down. It's kind of amazing to watch him block 100. 95 kid, but he's doing it with technique. A lot of times you see these dudes like the Diego Pounds types, they just, just run throw over people, yeah. Kids mm-hmm. around like ragdolls in high school. So they've got to learn the technique once they get to school. He looked, I mean, I didn't see all of what he did, so I don't know where other, you know, how he is in a lot of stuff. But what I did see, he looked like he's pretty sound in that area. Offensive line is, is another room that has, it's deep in potential. And I think for the first time in a while, they're going to have options. If they do have attrition, among the starters, Jacob, I and it's late October, and they're taking on what I, they go to Notre Dame late in the year. You've got to be able to plug in a guy you could trust in South Bend. I think that they're going to have those answers when they get to South Bend in late October. Agreed, and that's a big step from especially when Matt got here. Was just really wasn't any depth down there at all, and even last year they really weren't able to rotate down there as much as they wanted to. Um, I'm going to tell you a quick story about William Barnes because he was the big, he was the O lineman that stood out to me the most during that open practice that we got to see. There was a one particular instance where it was one of the earlier drills, probably about 30, 40 minutes into practice. Um, and they were just kind of doing some basic blocking stuff with with the O lineman, you know, kind of going is, against each other, and. Uh, William Barnes kind of took his helmet off at one point and they, they, it was getting close to the end of the drill. And, and all you hear is Barnes say, I mean, come on guys, like two more reps and then we're done two more reps and then we're done. And I remember looking at him and I'm like at first, cause you know, you, all these guys are wearing helmets. There's so many guys out there and I'm running around like with a chicken with his head cut off, trying to get video of everybody. And at first I was like, who is that guy? And I was like, he looks familiar, but I wasn't hundred percent sure. Looked up his number and I was like, Oh crap, that's William Barnes. He kind of a guy that I'd forgotten about a little bit. And that for me was kind of he besides just his leadership and what he was bringing, which we haven't had a lot of open practices, especially over the past couple of years. But I have to imagine that's kind of a new aspect of a game that he's maybe developed because Mac Brown, it was funny because once I saw that, you know, the past couple of press conferences and even some of the players have said it. I mean, William Barnes has been a guy that Mac Brown is absolutely praised. And that might be a little bit of Mac trying to get him to come along even more and be that guy that can step up and maybe kind of, you know, trying to encourage him a little bit. But based on what I saw at that practice, he was one of the most impressive guys in that room and just the leadership that he brought. Because like you mentioned, he's a guy that played a little bit as a freshman, but since then has really not played a lot for this team, played a little bit last not much year. at all. Yeah, has played a little bit last year in some mop-up minutes as well. But just to see a guy like that who's a junior now taking that leadership role, it, it just looking more interested out there, and that's no knock on him, but just looking like he was fully engaged with what was going on and trying to encourage his teammates to be better and be a leader in that room. I think that bodes really well. And yeah, Diego Pound's a guy that was just one of the biggest guys in that room already. So a lot of potential for him. And one other guy I want to touch on real quick, Jonathan Adorno. Played a little bit last year, you know, kind of came in as a highly recru- recruited guy. He's from my neck of the woods over here. I live in Wake Forest. So he's about 20 minutes down the road in Roseville, North Carolina. But 
he was a guy that looks a lot bigger as well. So I think depth wise, if you, especially if you can get a guy like William Barnes, who's been around the program and came in as highly touted as he has, and is, as you know, built as he has, and is you know, lost some weight and looks in a lot better shape. If you can get a guy with experience like him to step up, I mean, that's just going to bode so much better for this, this offensive line that's already stacked in terms of the starting position. But yeah, I wanted to go ahead and tell that story because that was one of the biggest things that just, not even just the O-line, from the entire practice as a whole. That was one of the moments. And there was going to be was another instance where he did it as well, where he was talking a lot. That really stood out to me the most, just, you know, especially the fact that Max really talked him up since then. So, yeah. I, I, think, I think with respect to William Barnes, I think that this spring was kind of the fork in the road moment for him at Carolina. Yeah, it's kind of do or die. Yeah. This is his fourth season in the program. I remember when he was at the freak show, Fedora's freak show in 17. 17, probably. 17, yeah. And they thought he was going to commit at the end. And we waited. This was when it was um, when Gerard, Bruce, and I were out there. And we waited. And we waited. We actually thought I think Reuter was going to commit that night, too. And so you've got Reuter and a couple of the coaches talking, uh, Heckendorf and those guys talking over by the tunnel, and Coach Cap and William Barnes and his dad talking. And we we thought that they were, that he was going to commit. So we waited and waited and waited. He didn't commit. He committed a little bit later. He was the prize of the class. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, he was a prize. He was, he was the prize of the class. And then he comes in and, you know, he played a lot earlier. We thought, you know, this guy's going to be the starter For at, you know, by the end of September. Mm-hmm. And he played a lot against Cal. The offense didn't really move. They had a ton of three and outs when he was out there. He did struggle, obviously. And then he got banged up and just took a long time for him to work through that. And what some of the stuff you're alluding to is body language. Mm-hmm. His body language two years ago, we, you know, the first spring practice when uh, the, uh, of Max tenure, the body language of William Barnes that day, the body language of William Barnes that August, it's very different now. And whether or not Matt lit a fire in him or Stacy Searles lit a fire in him or not, you're in your fourth year in the program. You got a lot of young dudes that are talented coming behind you. At some point, you got to light your own fire. Yeah, And if you don't light your own fire, then you're not going to survive. You're not going to last. You're going to be at the end of the bench. You're not going to get on the field. You're not going to meet your dreams, your goals, whatever they are. So, so at some point, a guy's got to dig down and do it himself. So this is kind of a fork in, fork in the road spring for him. If he's going to be a factor at UNC, this was the spring. This was the time for him to finally make the turn going in the right direction and become that guy. On the limited stuff that we saw, it looks like he's taking that or, uh, you know, he, he's taking that seriously. He's making something of it based on what Mac volunteered about him. He wasn't asked about it. He was volunteered about it. It would, I would think he's doing the same thing. And, and I love stuff like that. Yeah. And, and not, you know, fans get upset when athletes don't meet their timetable, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Like they I own get it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm an artist fan. I get it. I, you know, I, I want some young guys up. I want them to hit the ball. I want them to meet my standards, right? Yeah. Well, my standards got nothing to do with nothing. Mm-hmm. So inside this program, every kid's course is different. It's just like a DNA. Their paths are all unique. Their timetables are unique. And sometimes they have to go through a little more crap to get to where they're going to get yeah. to. And other guys, Tony Grimes ain't going to have to do a lot of that. Mm-hmm. He's just so daggone good. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a really, really good player quickly. Mm-hmm. Some of the guys have to go through some other stuff to get to that point. Yeah. That's okay. Mm-hmm. As long as they get to it. And it appears right now that William Barnes has made strides and maybe starting to become, maybe not the player people projected four years ago, but if he could be a serviceable, reliable part of a team that achieves something significant, that'll be a hell of an accomplishment. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be fun to see how that, it's going to be interesting to me to see how that, not the starters, because that's already established, but how the rest of that room shakes out. And if they ever get to that, you know, like Max said, maybe even 10 deep, that'll be so huge. Yeah. The Mm -hmm. rotation. Yeah. We all know about the starters. I'm not going to write much about the starters. When we get to fall camp, we're going to write about the rotation, the rotation, the rotation. It's huge, How yeah. deep does that group go? Because they're going to get it. They're going to experience attrition. They've got to have guys they can trust behind the starters. Exactly. And that might be one of the most important. That might be the, not the single most important, but one of the no. most important storylines of fall camp. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see how that position group shakes out for the rest of spring and going in to fall camp here over the next few months. But I think it's a good place to wrap this one up, AJ. A lot of a lot of things if you're a Carolina fan to be excited about this O-line. I mean, it's just absolutely – just returns a ton of starters, return, returns a ton of talent. And like you said, if you can get to that 8 to 10 deep, I mean, it's when you got a guy like Sam Howell beside you and a lot of the other weapons that this offense has, 
you know, I think this offense has a really good chance to be really good. And, you know, you're only as good as your guys in the trenches, man. So that O-line's got to got to play well this season. It looks like it's going to shake out to be a really good position group, you know, from, from five to ten potentially. So we'll see how that works out over the rest of spring and going into fall. But I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. That's going to do it for – I guess that wraps up our offensive uh, tape talk series. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah, we'll be doing the defense and we're rolling that out over the next couple of weeks. So y'all make sure – to stay tuned for that. And if you haven't seen the previous ones we've done on the quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, make sure you go check that one out after this video ends. But as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. We see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.